Capitalism and Disability by Marta Russell. This is chapter 8. Handy Capitalism Makes Its Debut. While a backlash is in full gear against the ADA across the nation, the Wall Street Journal recently tagged disabled people as the next consumer niche. Another icon of America's ruling class, Fortune magazine, picked up on the disabled Americans are a vast market theme, and soon after, Fortune 500 Fortune 500 sponsored an infomercial on CBS, which declared that disabled people have one trillion dollars in consolidated buying power. So it was that handy capitalism made its de- debut, its media debut. Handy capitalism, a term coined by Johnny Tootle, a lecturer with a disability seeking seeking to trademark the term, is firmly centered in free market ideology. It has nothing to do with the ADA or the right of disabled persons to employment, reasonable accommodations, and access. Rather, the handy capitalist philosophy is that disabled people should not be viewed as charity cases or regulatory burdens, but as profitable marketing targets. Citing 1995 census data that there are 48.5 million people, 15 and older, with disabilities in the U.S., with annual discretionary income totaling $175 billion as support, handy capitalists pose that products and services ought to be spurred by the profit potential. Lying in these numbers, not by ADA compliance, Targeting people with disabilities for purely altruistic reasons, Cheryl Duke, president of W.C. Duke Associates, Incorporated, a disability consulting firm in Virginia, explains to the WSJ, isn't going to get the return on investment. If you do it because it's a money-making project, it will continue. Discounting the value of rights, the handy capitalists hold that in order for disabled people to be tolerated by our capitalist society, rights must be subsumed to the profit motive. Under, the philo- under this philosophy, social success will be ours when disabled persons gain status as consumers with enough buying power to command it. But where does the buying power reside? Who really controls it and who benefits? The handy capitalist $1 trillion buying power media blitz places in the public mind the illusion that disabled people, as a class of persons, have achieved economic prosperity. This flies in the face of the facts. Buying power data does not tell the story of the persistently high unemployment rate and wide income disparities that dominate the economic lives of the vast majority of disabled persons. The majority of disabled people are not even working, despite a growing economy and a 29-year low unemployment rate. Potential workers with disabilities remain chronically unemployed. Ten years after the passage of the ADA, national employment surveys show that the unemployment rate for the disabled population remains at 70%, nowhere near to achieving economic parity with the non-disabled population. For example, there is a wage gap between disabled and non-disabled workers. In 1995, workers with disabilities earned, on average, only 72.4% of the amount non-disabled workers earned annually. Poverty remains disproportionate amongst disabled Americans. Census data in 1995 shows the non-disabled poverty rate to be 13.5% compared to a poverty rate of 20.2% for disabled persons. So where's all the so where is all the consumer driven buying power the handy capitalists rave about? There are 17 million working age disabled people, 5.5 million of whom have a job. The employed will have some extra money to spend beyond expenses everyone must pay, such as rent, utilities and food. The poor have some buying power. The rest of the 48.5 million disabled people are under 18 or over 65. Some buying power may rest with the parents of disabled children and the elderly who have had a lifetime to accumulate a bank account before they acquired a disability. It certainly does not rest with the 11 million working age blind, deaf, 
developmentally disabled or mobility impaired people who are unemployed, living on SSDI or SSI, and not earning fat salaries on the upwardly mobile track. The equally important question is how much of the money being spent on disability specific needs and products is under the control of the disabled individual. It is most likely that the real buying power resides with government agencies who make purchases for disabled individuals under programs such as SET or Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, the Department of Rehabilitation, or with private insurance companies. Rather than the buying power being in the hands of the disabled consumer, these agencies make the purchases on behalf of their disabled clients. The decision-making power is far removed from the disabled individual. As it turns out, the WSJ story was spurred by now defunct WE Media, an internet portal whose corporate partners include Hotjobs.com Limited, a job search site that pushes products and real estate targeted at disabled persons. Best known for its New York City billboard proclaiming we've been called gimp cripple and our new favorite, retard, it also publishes WE Magazine, a slick, yuppie lifestyle publication that outs disabled persons in fashionable clothing in luxurious and chic public environments and advertises $500 Belova watches. Politically, WE seems to be equally comfortable with Mayor Giuliani as they are with Al Gore. But who are WE? Voice of the people? WE is not even controlled by a pack of disabled entrepreneurs. I had to search far and wide to find any disabled persons associated with it. All three main movers and shakers in this enterprise are white, non-disabled males, though there are some disabled persons listed on the advisory board and as contributing editors. As have other civil rights movements, the disability rights movement must question who profits from the disability-specific buying that does go on. Canceling his subscription to WE, Mike Brannick of Arkansas writes, you put far too much emphasis on high dollar items. How many of us can travel to Europe or dine in five-star restaurants? Millions of disabled people like Brannick cannot, could never afford these products slickly produ produced on the pages of WE. Many have only acquired some disability specific items because a government program will pay for them. WE and its philosophy of handy capitalism glorifies what amounts to a wee disability consumer constituency in the face of gross inequality while undercutting the value of equal rights. Rights, contrary to the handy capitalist opinion, are not altruistic. Civil rights laws, though certainly not a complete remedy for the inequality described here, are an important element in the struggle in building oppressed groups' economic parity under capitalism. There's a gaping hole in the handy capitalist's vision. Employers do not see disabled people as a money-making project when faced with the non-standard costs of providing reasonable accommodations, higher health insurance premiums, and other expenses that may arise. They come to view the disabled employee as a liability and want to unload them. The unregulated labor market has not rectified the high disabled unemployment rate, yet as is necessary under capitalism. The consumer market cannot grow without more disabled people making the money to buy products. The consumer market then depends on advancing the employment of disabled persons. If the courts continue to rule against disabled plaintiffs in employment discrimination cases, studies show employers win by wide margins, states continue to challenge the cons constitutionality of the ADA where employees have brought suit against them for disability discrimination, and the EEOC continues its lax enforcement of our employment rights, our economic condition will continue to stagnate. How might the handy capitalists much anticipate next consumer niche fare then? Disabled people, an eighth of the world, disabled people, an eighth of the world population, remain the most impoverished, the least likely to rise above subsistence in every nation in the world. The wee middle class of disabled persons in the U.S. does not exist in many countries. In the underdeveloped nations, disabled people have no rights, no ADA. They can be found sleeping on sidewalks without wheelchairs, crutches, or other goods they need to live a life with dignity. 
not that we don't have this in the U.S. too. There are no curb cuts in Africa or Asia and very few in Western Europe. There are no accessible buses to provide transport to a job. Disabled people in the U.S. only have what little we have now because we have struggled for our rights. Holding up yuppie lifestyle, consumerism, handy capitalism as a solution to disabled people's problems in the face of such reality is a terrible hoax. Making, making their debut, here are a few wealthy people with corporate sponsorships stepping up and calling for a capitulation to capitalism when the ADA is under a vicious attack by the conservative courts. Handy capitalists are forging a partnership between wealthy and powerful non-disabled persons with the aspiring to be entrepreneurial, disabled middle class ready to jump on board. This forebodes a political alliance between conservative and liberal disability leaders and government not to push for civil rights, but to rely on the handy capitalist strategy for disabled advancement within capitalism. Let the market rule. Unless disabled people see ourselves as active creators of equality, which means undoing capitalism, which can never be made equitable, we will be doomed to be tools of the owning class and our people like other oppressed groups will remain impoverished.